we're going to be looking at Jeremiah chapter 16, the God of new hope and restoration. Now, you know that Jeremiah has been speaking on behalf of God about the judgment that was certain to come. And what we're, we're going to need to understand is that the same Jesus that spoke of judgment and sin and how God will, will be vindicated and the wrath of God will come on those people who choose sin as their God rather than God as their God, we need to understand this, that when we sin, it is like walking down a street seeing a shop, seeing the shop window, and in anger, putting our fist through the glass of the window. And when we do that, police tend to take a dim view of such uh, damage and you will be charged by the police for damage to property. And that's kind of like sin. When you sin, you break a law and there will be a penalty to pay for breaking that law. But you know what else also happens when you put your fist through a window of glass? Your own arm will get cut to shreds. You will get injured yourself and that's what sin does. So sin is not just about breaking God's law. Sin is God showing us the very things that will harm us. We've said it before, the word of God is not a list of do's and don'ts. The word of God is like a map of the landmines of life. And you can go through life blindfolded. You can go through life walking and, and randomly hitting landmines and always thinking, why is life so unfair to me? It's because you haven't got a map. You're walking on landmines. And today we want to put a map in your hands and help you to see where those Landmines are. So we're going to read verse 14. And it's in the context that Jeremiah has been speaking judgment, and then God, the God of hope, doesn't just speak of judgment, he speaks of hope, he speaks of restoration. And let's see if you can hear it. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when it shall no longer be said, as the Lord lives who brought up the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Uh, you might know in the history of Israel, the event that saw Israel come out of Egypt was the most defining moment in Israel's history. There is a word for it. We'll, we'll look at that in a moment. But I want you to see this because here Jeremiah has been prophesying of the certain doom of the nation and here God is saying, but what I'm going to do after this will make what I did when I brought you out of Egypt seem like a forgotten memory. I'm going to do something so grand, so wonderful for you, that you won't, you won't speak of Egypt as the most glorious day in your history. You'll speak of what I'm about to do as your most glorious day. Isn't this, this is wonderful. This is the God who's hammering them over sin and holding them to account and and speaking of their certain judgment, and then says, but I'm going to do something wonderful in your midst. It's going to make Egypt look like a forgotten memory. Wow. This tells us something about God. It tells us that God not only is able to turn the hopeless into the hopeful, not only does it tell us that, it tells us that he does. Not only can he, he does. But this is not the only picture that's in mind here. And how do we know that? Because in a few chapters we're going to read what is really in the heart of God. And what is really in the heart of God is that one day he would turn hopeless enslavement, not just of a nation, but of everybody. The hopeless enslavement of mankind, all of us. Where we're enslaved to sin, he would turn it into salvation. And as we've heard already today, God offers salvation. He offers forgiveness. He offers a new start. And so God continues the conversation and he says this, Therefore, 
Behold, I will make them know. I will make them know, God says. This once I will make them know my power and my might, that they shall know that my name is the Lord. And that word, capital L, small caps, O-R-D, is the one that cannot be compared to, the one who is and there is no other, the one in whom all power, all love, all grace, all hope resides. And Jeremiah is on his knees, I reckon, at this point, hands in the air, talking with God. Now, what does Jeremiah tell us in a few chapters? And I'm going to just jump ahead a little bit, and this is where we finish. Because we read in Jeremiah 31 that all of this actually culminates in what's called the New Covenant. And we're in it today, church. This is the New Covenant. The New Covenant is about giving hope to the hopeless. And it's not just available to one nation. It's available to all. 